Welcome to the Nexus 2 Help Guide. In this video, we will be using a custom VST that we have made in a previous video so that we can use the auto label feature. We have placed the same marker set as the previous video onto our new subject. These are marker clusters on the pelvis, thighs, tibias and feet. We've also placed calibration only markers onto the knee and ankle joints. I'm now going to load the VST that we made in the previous video by going to the Resources pane Subjects tab. And I'm going to press the middle button called Create a new subject from a labeling skeleton. From this list, I will select the VST called LB Clusters. And to finish, I'm going to give my subject a name. For all subjects where you want to use a custom VST, make sure that you have at least a static and a functional trial. There are different ways you can do this. The first is to capture separate static and functional trials. The second is to capture a single functional trial where the subject starts in the base pose. And the last is to capture a static trial and use one of the dynamic trials for the functional calibration. The first two methods are the preferred workflows while the third would be used in cases where a functional range of motion trial may not be possible. In this video, I have captured a trial where my subject starts off in the base pose and then goes through the functional range of motion where the subject performs the star pattern with both hips flexes and extends both knees, rotates the ankle joints, and then returns to the base pose. I've already loaded the trial from my data management and I have reconstructed the trial. I have already loaded the tools pane pipelines tab and I've got the auto initialize labeling pipeline loaded. This is the same pipeline that you would be using if you were to calibrate a subject who is wearing the plug-in gate marker set. I'm going to make sure that I'm on a frame where my subject is standing in the base pose and that all markers are visible. And I'm going to run the auto label static frame pipeline operation first, which will, as the name suggests, automatically label the trial. I'm going to check to see that all markers are properly labeled. If there was anything that was mislabeled, I would fix it. As I'm happy with the labeling, I'm going to proceed to scale the subject VSK. This will scale the segments of the VSK to match the segment length of the subject. To illustrate this, I'm going to open the subject viewer. And when I run this operation, you will notice that my subject is slightly shorter than compared to the subject that I built the VST on, and so the subject scales down accordingly. The final step in the pipeline is to use the markers only subject calibration pipeline operation. We are using the markers only subject calibration because the joint locations in the model were already optimized when we built the VST, and so all we need to do is to reposition the markers in the VSK. After the operation has been run, we can see that the markers have been repositioned in the subject viewer, but that the segments and joints have stayed in the same position. We can see that the segments and joints have appeared in the 3D perspective. I'm also expecting this calibration to provide good auto labeling as the joint centers are roughly where they should be functionally. You will also notice that on the 3D perspective, that the markers on the ankle and knee joints have been unlinked from the rest of the markers and they have also been removed from the subject viewer. This is because when I built the VST, I had set their marker status to calibration only. When I go to capture my dynamic trials, I don't want these markers to be present on my subject. And so I will be physically removing them from my subject. And similarly, after running the calibration, they are disconnected from the rest of the markers and are removed from the marker list. Finally, I'm going to save the subject. Now that I have done a static calibration, 
I could either use this calibrated subject for auto-labeling the dynamic trials, or I could perform a functional calibration to further optimize this subject. The decision as to which step to choose will likely depend on the quality of the original VST and how dynamic the movements are in the subsequent trials. This can usually be determined by performing a quick pilot test after creating your VST. The remainder of this video will be split up into three sections. The first workflow is where we will be using the static calibration, which we have just completed, to auto label a trial with a small range of motion. In the second workflow, we will be performing a functional range of motion calibration, and then using the functional calibration to auto label a dynamic trial with a larger range of motion. And in the third workflow, we will be using a dynamic trial as our functional calibration. I'm now going to use the static calibration that we performed in the previous step to reconstruct and label a dynamic trial with a small range of motion. I have captured a trial when my subject is walking across the volume. And I've already loaded the trial from my data management. When I change to the 3D perspective view, you can see that I have created a 6 by 6 by 2 meter cube to show you the target volume. When I run the reconstruct and label pipeline and check the quality tab, we can see that we have 49 gaps and 70% of the markers are labeled. However, we can see that in the heat map and when we play through the trial, that the subject only enters the capture volume after approximately frame 200 and leaves the volume again around frame 600. And so I'm going to manually crop the trial to where the subject first enters the capture volume and to where the subject leaves the capture volume. We can see that over these six meters, we get approximately eight steps. While we do have gaps, these will easily be accounted for using the gap filling methods that are outlined in the gap filling videos that are listed and linked in the description below. We can also have a look at the graph view. And the trajectory tails to see that the markers do not switch. I'm now going to show you how to use the functional calibration to reconstruct and label dynamic trials with larger ranges of motion. We would still run the auto initialize labeling pipeline using the exact same steps that we have performed earlier in the video. I've already loaded the combined static and functional calibration trial. If we had captured a separate functional calibration trial, we would load that one instead. Now I'm going to run the reconstruct and label pipeline operation. The reason I am reconstructing and labeling a trial that had already been labeled is so that I can use the static calibration to auto label this functional trial, which will help with the labeling. If I had a separate dynamic trial, I would still need to reconstruct and label the trial anyway. You will notice that the knee and ankle joint markers aren't labeled as these were calibration only markers. This is okay as they were physically removed from the subject and aren't in any dynamic trials, and they've also been removed from the VSK. I'm now going to go through the trial and make sure that my markers are properly labeled. That is, if markers switch, I switch them back. If markers become unlabeled, I label them properly. However, I do not gap fill. This is the exact same procedure that we used in the building a custom VST video. Once this is done, I'm going to make sure that the calibrate labeling skeleton ROM pipeline operation is loaded. And I'm going to highlight functional skeleton calibration. And then I'm going to check ignore calibration markers. This is because the knee and ankle joint calibration only markers have been removed from the VSK. Once this is done, I can press play. Once the pipeline has finished running, I will save the subject and save the trial. 
Now that the functional calibration has been completed, I can now reconstruct and label the rest of my trials, which I will be showing you how to do in the next step. I've now loaded a bounding trial during which my subject goes through a larger range of motion. I'm going to crop the trial to where my subject first enters the camera field of view and to where the subject leaves the camera field of view. And I'm going to reconstruct and label the trial and then turn the 3D overlay on. We can see that while there are gaps, these are because the markers are being included by the subject's hips at the start of the bounding motion, and these can easily be filled using the gap filling techniques that are outlined in other videos. We can also look at the graphs to see that the markers don't switch. There may be situations where your subjects are unable to reach the full range of motion that has been described in the functional trials. In these instances, you can use a regular dynamic trial to perform the functional calibration instead. You would still run the auto-initialized labeling pipeline on a trial where your subject is standing in the base pose, as we have done so in the previous steps. Instead of loading a functional range of motion trial, I've loaded a walking trial, and I've reconstructed and labeled it and I've cropped the trial to where I have a gait cycle on each leg. I'm now going to check to see that all the markers are correctly labeled and that they don't switch. As with any calibration trial, if there are gaps, we do not gap fill them as this will be introducing artificial data into the calibration. Once this has been completed, I will again load the Calibrate Labeling Skeleton ROM pipeline operation, highlight Functional Skeleton Calibration in the current pipeline, and then check Ignore Calibration Markers in the Properties, and run the operation. Once this has been completed, I will save the subject, and save the trial. I can now continue to reconstruct and label the rest of my dynamic trials, which is what I'm going to be showing you in the next step. I've now loaded another walking trial and I'm going to reconstruct and label it. I'm also going to crop it to where the subject first enters the capture volume and to where the subject leaves the capture volume. And now I'm going to assess the labeling. To summarize this video, I have shown you the three methods you can use to auto-label your dynamic trials. Once you have finished auto-labeling your trials, you will still need to process your data. This may include gap filling, filtering, and modeling your data. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at vicon.com.